how is this new Dow different from the old Dow, other than, Jim, because I know you're going to say it, that it's more focused? Well, we've, what we've tried to do is we've tried to put businesses together out of okay. the Dow-DuPont combination that have a similar business model and also serve similar markets. And so one of the things we wanted to do is make it easier for the shareholders to understand. One of the knocks on us long term was Dow was too complex. We right. didn't understand right. it. How do you operate this thing? These six businesses serve three market verticals, packaging, infrastructure, and consumer goods. And we're very focused on those businesses. And it's a good growth company. But you say it's a good growth company, but you also said on the call that the economy is softer than last year. So if it softens further, I want to know, you have got a dynamite dividend, the highest in the Dow. Of, Dow is the highest in Dow. I like that. Uh, $2.1 billion. Is it sacrosanct? Is it safe if the economy continues to soften? When we put the dividend out there to send a message back to investors, we want to make this the most compelling investment in the material space, and we think we can be best in class in this space. We've got a great portfolio. It grows greater than GDP, one and a half times GDP, most of our product lines. Fourth quarter, things slowed down a little bit, right? You had autos in slowing down. You had China slowing down. You had trade. And then December was kind of a, everything stopped the last two weeks. I don't think that's the future, but you've got to get through that. As we look forward, China's going to grow. The world is going to grow. The demand for our products is going to grow. That dividend, we've got 2 to $3 billion of EBITDA upside coming and 3 to $4 billion of cash flow upside. And we've got a billion of synergies that are going to come out. $500 million of synergies and $300 million of stranded cost coming out this year and next year. So we've got the horsepower to support that dividend. Uh, crude oil is coming off the best quarter in a decade, uh, 62 almost today on WTI. Right. How, how is the new company leveraged or exposed? One of the things that hit us in fourth quarter was oil went down 40 percent. And so when that happens, our base materials that we use to make everything get compressed. And we, we saw that margin compression. Oil to natural gas ratio is a big deal for us. So as oil expands, we can move prices up. But sometimes in the move up, the prices lag. And you know, in the first quarter, we gave a little guidance that we would be a little shallow, mainly because the prices haven't moved as fast as we thought. Look, it's not a big deal. It was a penny a pound on polyethylene. As you move through the year and oil firms up, as China comes back and the stimulus kicks in, you're going to be off to the races. OK, we got to go here, all right? Plastic bags, New York State. Looks like it's going to be a trend. What does it mean if each state adopts a New York State policy to your business? Well, I think the problem that we're dealing with is a plastic waste issue, and it's a waste issue in general, and every, nobody disagrees with that. And people are tackling it different ways. So some people are tackling it with nuisance bans, like a grocery bag or a plastic straw. Those are not huge demand drivers for our business. Remember, plastics have grown so fast because of sustainability. That's been the reason. The global market for plastics is 400 million metric tons. It's doubled in the last decade. Lighter, faster, cleaner, stronger. That drives plastic growth. We have to tackle this waste issue. And I know you put an alliance together. I know that this is central for you. Everybody I know who knows you thinks this is incredibly important. But let me ask you the existential question. Why should it be made? Why should you make the stuff that is in the landfills? Why should you make the stuff that is in that, that size of, of the ocean? I am asking this question. Jim, I know the answer because I right. know you. But this is what my daughters asked me to ask you. I mean, because I said, I got that one. So why, how does he live with himself? That kind of stuff. These, these are materials that you touch every day. The business of chemistry touches your life. 98, 99% of everything you use every day. Your computer, your car. If you, it doesn't matter if you drive an, a combustion engine vehicle or an, an all-electric vehicle, they all have a problem. They have a weight issue. And the only way you're going to make them lighter weight is with composites and composites and plastics. And that's driving the growth of the materials. And they're substituting out other things. Food packaging is one of the biggest growth areas for us. Medical packaging, how are you going to get your sterile medical supplies to the hospital? So banning things, I don't think, is the answer. Dealing with the issue of the waste problem is the answer, and creating circular economy solutions. What do we do with that waste at the end of life? Most people today think plastics has no value at the end of life. Not true. If they think it has no value, they throw it away, or they throw it out the window. We can't have that. It has value. It can be turned into more useful products. It can have another life. 
And that's the mindset shift we have to make. But what happens if you say it's recyclable, you make it recyclable, but it's not economic to recycle, like so many cities. How do you, your alliance, 1.5 billion, this is something I know you think about every day, and I need people to understand. This guy is not some guy who wants plastic thrown along the wayside. I know no. you're worried about this issue. How do you make it so that we can recycle better in this country? We're bad at it. And how do we address that China is responsible for so much of the pollution? Well, you have to change the value equation, right? So if everybody thinks there's no value to it, then it goes away. If right. you put a value on it, let's. I've used this example before. In Michigan, if you buy a bottle of uh, soda and, and it's got a deposit of 10 cents on it, people take it back. Right. And they get the 10 cents back. You put a value on that, you change the equation, you don't have the waste issue. We put a value on the plastics, you drive a different behavior. Right now, a lot of municipalities in this country make revenue off the landfills. So that's what they want to do. The cheapest thing to do is to landfill it. All right, if you don't want to do that, we've got to change the equation. When you do that, what you'll find is that people are willing to step up and be part of the solution. So if your approach to this is to ban everything, that basically means you're taking away people's choices, you're taking away their rights to choose, you're taking away their freedoms. If you turn it the other way and say, you can use all these things that make your life more convenient, more sustainable, easier, but I need you to change the behavior on the consumer end, what you'll find is most people step up and say, I want to be part of the solution, I just don't know what to do. I think gener gener generationally we're moving in that direction for sure. One last thing on global growth, you sound like a pretty optimistic on macro, but is that contingent on China, a resolution with China trade or not? Well, clearly you need U.S. and China. Those are the two engines of the global economy, so they've got to be going. I think what happened at the end of last year when, when China really took a lot of liquidity out of the market in the secondary banking market, that hit a lot more small and medium enterprises and it hit individuals more than we anticipated and more than China probably anticipated. So they came back in with stimulus, but it was more income tax and VAT. And that to me is longer cycle. So most of us are expecting that toward the back half of the year, things are going to improve. It was a slow start to the first quarter. With Chinese New Year being in February is a long Chinese New Year. They're back in the market in March. Things usually pick up in the second and third quarter. I think we got the chance to build some momentum here. Oil will be constructive. Global demand is good. You've also got to remember we've got a lot of growth coming in. Southeast Asia, India, African continent is up and coming. So I think globally, if we don't create an economic downturn, we're in good shape. Now, in full disclosure, uh, my capital trust owns shares in your company. It's the highest yielder, and a lot of it is because of you and your leadership. I, I appreciate your patience with questions that I think people ask me. Uh, and I also want people to know this is what you live and breathe. And anyone who thinks this is a material scientist and you want this problem stopped of pollution and you do want to give people a choice. My, my team that's here and the team, we got the best team in the industry. Every one of them is motivated to make a difference every day. They're not out trying to create problem, products that create problems. They're trying to solve problems. So that motivates the heck out of everybody that we work with. We got a good team. We can tackle this issue.